Good afternoon, Rye Guy here. Uh, I'm down here with the Grizzly 660, and no, there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, I'm going to be doing some pretty basic maintenance, and I thought you guys could kind of benefit from seeing some of that. Um, today we're going to be doing a engine coolant change. And I do apologize for starting the video a little bit late. Uh, wasn't using my head. Didn't think to bring my camera down. And I just went straight at it. So anyway, we'll get straight into it. What you see go I got going on right now is I'm trying to access the drain port to the water pump and um, just take a good general look around this side of the frame, make sure there's no damage or anything like that. And that's a good time to do it if you're, and you're doing your maintenance, your basic maintenance and stuff like that. So, uh, it's been about two years since uh, the engine oil, or geez, the engine coolant's been changed in this. And I usually keep an eye on that by looking at this reservoir bottle right here and making sure that, you know, there's no discoloration or no foreign objects floating around inside of there. Um, some of the times if you have an engine oil leak between your water pump and your engine, your main seal, you'll have little black spots floating in it and that's not a good sign. That means uh, you either got engine oil coming into your coolant or cooling coming into your engine oil. And believe me, it's best to have engine oil coming into your coolant because you can Screw up a motor pretty bad if you start to get uh, coolant inside of your oil. Now, it's a good idea to check your reservoir bottle before you leave any time. Um, and you can access that through this little port if you have a Grizzly 660 and have this style uh, side shroud. That little slit right there, you'll be able to see that. And I do apologize for the unsteady camera work here. Uh, the camera's actually still attached to the end of my helmet and I'm holding my helmet. So, I am, I am trying to work on getting a steady cam uh, set up, made up, um, two things, three things, time, money, and, uh, just trying to get some basic idea of what I want. So, okay, let's, let's stop the talking here and, uh, let's go straight at it. What you see I have done already is I have the driver's side footwell taken off, and if you're in England, it'd be, uh, the right side, the right side being the driver's side, not on the ATV, but on the road. Um, that consists of three... Uh, these, and that's just the number three Phillips with uh, eight millimeter bolts behind them and washers. And then you have ten millimeter bolts, there's four of them, two and four. So you're going to want to take all those out and uh, slide your foot well straight out. Uh, of course, obviously, if you have one of these, take that off. And the next step I'm going to do is actually take off this side track. Now, so I don't have to do it later on. I've already gone ahead and accessed the filler cap for the radiator. And once you start draining, it's not going to drain out very fast until you have this taken out because your coolant system is pressurized. So once you pull your uh, drain plug out of your water pump, not a lot of stuff's going to come out until you actually break that vacuum that's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of that side trout off, which is just 10 millimeter, 10 I think, 10 millimeter bolts. Let's check here. Yep, 10 mil. And there is two, three, four, five, six. So we'll get that off and uh, go to the next step. Okay, so we're taking off that, uh, that trout. And, okay. And what the bolts are after is actually this one right here. Um, don't undo that one, because that one actually holds your water pump to the uh, side of the engine. Um, you want to make sure that you're working with a clean surface, so I do have a little bit of brake clean here. I'm just going to spray and all around there generally, make sure we have no contaminants going into the system as soon as we crack that drain plug, which is not, you know, not uh, very often that something like that would happen, not very common, but uh, it's always a good idea to make sure that you are working with a clean surface as much as you can. And what I'm going to do is before I crack the top end of the radiator, so to break that vacuum, 8 millimeter bolt, and be careful with this stuff guys, this is very very soft aluminum, that's all it took to get that off. Okay. Like so, you'll see not a lot's coming out of there. 
and you can access the radiator cap right from here and you want to be careful too because sometimes this is going to spray right out of there so i'm just going to slowly open this up oh yeah look at that lucky i did that break the vacuum come on get that radiator cap off of there there we go <laughs> Jeez, not making a mess here or anything. Okay, so now that you've made a complete mess all over the floor, the camera, the seat, and yourself, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pop this drain plug back in. You want to be careful too here because this has one of these little copper washers. It's probably a real good idea to go ahead and order one of those when you do this, but uh, I was a dummy and forgot. But as long as it's in good condition, not overly squashed or anything like that, you don't have any big ridges uh, kind of inside of here or anything like that, which would indicate that you're going to end up with a leak, um, I'd go ahead and just pop that back in. Like so. And again, when you're tightening this, be very, very careful. The stuff is very, very soft aluminum. Just almost over finger tighten. That's all you need. Just like that. All right. Clean that up a little bit. And now's a good time to clean that up pretty fairly well, just to make sure that you're not going to end up with any leaks or anything like that. And if you do, you can see it. So okay. A little scrub brush here somewhere. Okay, so now that we got that all drained, um, if you wanted to, you could clean your drain pan out beforehand. This already had oil in it, so I know that I'm going to see some black spotty stuff in the oil or in the coolant. But if it is in your reservoir bottle and it looks like that, with all those little black spots here, that's an issue. That means you've got a, you got a major problem and you're going to probably end up having to replace your main seal within here. And uh, I do have... A video for a Rhino 700 uh, that shows me replacing the main seal. Change the camera up just a little bit. There we go. Um, don't forget about your reservoir bottle because draining this is not going to drain your reservoir bottle. And to do that, very very simple. You just want to pull the hose off the top of here. Oh look, I'm making more of my best. Pull the hose off the uh, the bottom end of here. Like so. And make more of a mess. You want all that old coolant over there. It is hot down here. Jeez, it's 25 degrees. Probably 30 inside of here. I got sides there, metal sides on my uh, shed. Whew. Sweating. All right. So after this is done draining, uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to uh, either use some pre-mixed uh, antifreeze, but I prefer to mix my own. If you have any empty jugs around, uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, <coughs> don't When you're mixing antifreeze, uh, if that's your, your method of choice, don't go ahead and don't throw in half a bottle of antifreeze in there and then just top it up with water. That's not, that's not how it works. Uh, you want to make sure that you're mixing correctly. For most applications, it's always going to be 50-50. So 50% um, antifreeze and 50% distilled water. And make sure that you are using distilled water or a very clean source of water. Um, filtered water or something like that. Distilled water is, you know, the method of choice because there's no minerals in it. The way it was distilled, there's no minerals or anything like that in it. That's going to cause enzymes to build up in your radiator. Because minerals against the aluminum will eat away at the aluminum core of your radiator. And you're going to end up with a lot of problems. Contamination in your coolant. Uh, leaks. And you already have enough mud, crap, and everything else hitting that radiator when you're riding. And you don't want any of that stuff to be uh, inside of your, your rad. Because that's just going to kill it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get some coolant and get that mixed up 
and uh, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, I got some antifreeze all mixed up, 50-50, and uh, I have this old funnel. Now, it's dirty on the outside, but I did clean it on the inside with some brake clean and compressed air. I like using this for filling up uh, radiators because you can actually control the flow. Uh, you can stop it completely, which is great. Uh, and it's more easier just to hold this rather than trying to balance that all over the place. Nice clean stuff. Nice and bright. And we're just going to fill her up and try not to make too much of a mess. Right up to the top of the red. You can hear it bubbling. Those, those are the uh, the lines filling up. You don't want to fill these too quick either. The slower you fill these, the less chances of uh, bigger air bubbles that you're going to get. And if you're wondering, oops, I'm leaking. If you're wondering what I'm using for antifreeze, it's just uh, basic um, green antifreeze from uh, CarQuest. I have my helmet on. People must think I'm crazy. Okay. Still going down. We'll give it another quick little shot here. Okay. Alrighty. That will do for that. <sighs> Don't forget to cover up your bottle too, whatever you're working with. I mean, that's if I see any contaminants in that, uh, obviously I'll get rid of it, but um, you can't really see down inside that bottle if you have any contaminants in it. Uh, that uh, funnel I have here did come with a uh, cap for it. And I have no idea where that went. So, um, now that we have a radiator topped up, I like to just come down here, just give these hoses a couple squeeze. Just to try and work out any air bubbles. Now, I'm just reaching back here, squeezing the top one. Okay, so. Reconnect our hose for the reservoir bottle, like that. I'm not going to worry about filling this up right away. Um, what I want to do is I want to now run the ATV, check for leaks of course, run the ATV. Um, anything with a thermostat in it, a lot of the times when you're bleeding your radiators or radi bleeding your coolant system, that thermostat is in a closed position so it's not going to allow um, much if any coolant to flow through to the water pump right away now that is where it is important to leave this cap off and you want to be able to run the engine and you'll see the level of this coolant drop significantly once that is open so now I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up I want to make sure that I'm not going to get any dirt or contaminants falling down inside of here, especially because it's an ATV and they do vibrate quite a bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Who is warming the helmet on? I'll tell you that much. start to drop just a little bit so I'm just gonna get a little bit of coolant ready I 
as you can see you can still see it in there I'll just top it up to the very top just to make sure okay now what this is gonna do is it's gonna as you can see it's doing it now that thermostat's starting to open a little bit pulling the coolant through and it's trying to work through all the air bubbles that's trapped in your lines because when you drained it a whole bunch of air got in there and I'll come down here check for leaks it's all dry that's good I should have a rag with me somewhere. Sure, an old sock, that'll work, as long as it's clean. Not really clean there, but not too bad there. And I mean, I'm being realistic here too, guys, that I would never expect any of you, including myself, who actually works on stuff for a living, to be at home to have all the stuff that you have in the shop. So got to be realistic and I do have my choke on a little bit too so that the engines run a little bit quicker so it's going to warm up a little bit faster okay now we got some activity happening some air bubbles coming out that's a good thing that's what we want to see obviously do this in a well ventilated area I should actually have my exhaust pointed the other way but Now you see it starting to go down some. That means that thermostat's opening up further. That's a good thing. It means our thermostat's working. So you want to keep it uh, constantly topped up. to be looking for air bubbles too. Make sure that uh, you're running this thing until it's all worked itself out. And yeah, you're going to get some drips and stuff like that in the floor. So just be prepared for that. I actually should uh, put my drain pan underneath there. Help prevent some of that. There we go. Let's increase our throttle just a little bit and keep an eye out for it. Let that water pump spool up. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to shut her off here. And, oh, still a little bit of bubbles coming out. So now I'm going to fill up our reservoir bottle. Right here. What an awkward little spot this is. A little bit more. 
And if your ATV has a hot and a cold level on your reservoir bottle, pay attention to that. You want to fill it up to the hot level. Like that. Or some of them, most of them just have a, a high and a low level for your reservoir bottle. Okay. Alrighty. I'm going to stick that cap back on. Make sure that's nice and clean. I sprayed that down with some brake clean. And you want to check out our, your seals here. Make sure that, uh, you know, your spring's not broken or anything like that. And all not all rusty. So we're going to stick that back on the cap. And, and hopefully it won't fight you like this one's doing. I'm going to line it up. There we go. Push down. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it. And I'm going to let the uh, engine run until I hear that fan. Okay, guys. Well, that fan came on, stayed on, and shut itself off. So that uh, indicated to me that there don't seem to be any more air bubbles in the cooling system. And everything's working properly. That means thermostat's working. That means the temperature sensor's working for the fan. And the fan itself is working. So... I don't see any more leaks and we have everything properly topped up and hooked up so I'm gonna call this little job complete so that was changing your engine coolant on the Grizzly 660 however it goes for a lot of other ATVs for the same process and for cars and other vehicles as well but uh, I thought that I would share this video with you guys to you know if anybody is into just starting out doing regular maintenance to your ATV um, your coolant change should be um, every two years or again it, it depends on how long you use your ATV again or how much you know how long how hard that kind of stuff and where you use it to um, that always helps use your common sense when it comes to regular maintenance for your cooling system if you know you're running in mud more often and you're running at a higher temperature that have more of a chance that your coolant's going to break down so make sure that everything is uh, working properly. I always make sure that my radiator is nice and clean after every run. So anyway guys, I thank you for uh, joining me on this video. I hope it was informative for some people at least. It is very basic stuff, but uh, it's stuff that needs to be taken care of and it's a lot easier and a lot, well not easier, but a lot cheaper um, by, you know, a lot uh, to do stuff like this yourself. And for me personally, it gives me uh, peace of mind when um, when I do my work myself. So uh, then, you know, other than take it to a dealer. So I do appreciate your likes, comments, and views. If you like these types of videos as well, um, being the maintenance videos, I will try to get out some more maintenance videos in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this thing, take it for a little test drive, make sure that uh, everything's working, um, and before I put my new tires on, um, and you'll see that in my last video, uh, what I got, which I went with the Bear Claw HTRs, and... Uh, Maybe I'll link that in the description below. All right, guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you out in the trail. Rye guy out.